Okay, I really want to move on to something else, but I told you I would make this video, so I'm making this video showing you the conservation momentum from Newton's third law. So the third law says that if I have two objects interacting, here's a different picture of object A and object B. Let's say there is an electric repulsive force between them, or maybe they're colliding, or maybe there's a gravitational force. It doesn't matter. If those two objects are interacting, then object A, B pushes on A, and we'll write that as F B on A. But if that's the case, A also pushes on B with the exact same magnitude force, FBA, but in the opposite direction. And that is Newton's third law. It says that forces come in pairs. Forces, pairs. For every force, there's an equal and opposite force. If you want to say that, that's fine. I like forces come in pairs. Forces are an interaction between two objects. Okay, so let's use this along with the momentum principle. So I'm going to write I'm going to write it in a short time interval. Uh, so imagine that there's some short time interval that these are interacting, some delta t. So if that's the case, I can write f net a equals delta p a delta t. That's a p. That's the momentum. So this is the the net force is the change momentum divided by the change in time, and where time is delta t is some short time interval, but it doesn't exactly matter. Okay, so what force, if I only have these two objects interacting, then what force is acting on A? Well, it's just this. It's just BA. So I can write FBA equals delta PA over delta T. Okay, now I can do the same thing for object uh, B. So FAB is going to be delta PB over delta T. But these two, I can also write FBA is equal to negative FAB. They're the same magnitude but opposite direction, so I could do that. So I can put this in over here. I can do one of these. These two, if these are opposite of each other, these two must be opposite of each other. So delta PA over delta T equals negative delta PB over delta T. Now, those are just forces. It's impossible for force B to push on A for a different time than A pushes on B. So these two delta T's are the same and they cancel. So now I can add delta PB to both sides. I get delta PA plus delta PB equals zero, the zero vector. And this is conservation momentum. This says that if there are no external forces, then the total change in momentum has to be zero. That's exactly what that says. And, and it's important to note that if there was some other force acting on this particle right here, then these two would not be equal and opposite of each other, and momentum would not be conserved. So momentum is only conserved if you pick a system with no external forces. And it doesn't even have to be two particles. It could be as many as you want. You can show that this works for as many particles as you want. Okay, that's enough.